And if I don't have any, thank you for this opportunity to come together and study your word. Yeah, please be with us, guide us, guide our thoughts, our minds, give us a clarity of that thought. Help me to present this topic in a clear, precise way by myself. I can do it not. Bless us with your presence. Bless us with the presence of the angels. Help me to explain these things in a clear way. Help us to understand your will for these times. Help us to prepare for crisis that has already started to begin. Bless us, Lord, and help us to do what we have to do. We thank you, Lord, and ask for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Can, can everybody see the screen? What I'm sharing? I see a black screen. All right. It's a black screen. It says sun, moon, and stars at the bottom. Oh, perfect. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, pretty much the topic of today um, about the science and the sun, the moon, and the stars. I was um, discussing uh, this with a brother, and later on, I came across a quote of Ellen White where she was referring to the signs, but she was also using midnight cry symbology. So I was wondering if there would possibly be a connection between the signs in the sun, moon, and stars and the midnight cry. And yeah, when I was trying to uh, investigate this, this uh, Topic I came, yeah, I, I, I had some interesting observations that I would like to share. And uh, now feel free to, uh, to comment or express any feelings of amazement uh, or, uh, uh, how do you say that? Whatever you want to say. Uh, I think it's very interesting, it turned out to be very uh, interesting what, what we discover. So let's, uh, let's start. Um, we'll start with the first slide, Luke 21, 25. There shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. Uh, in the right comments uh, on this, he says, Let men beware, lest they neglect the words of Christ. As he warned his disciples of Jerusalem's destruction, that they might make their escape. So he has warned the world of the day of final destruction. All who will may flee from her wrath to come. She continues in the same quote. She says, There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations. Look 21. She also references Matthew, Mark, Revelation. She says, What she therefore are Christ is words of admonition. Mark 13. They that heed the warning shall not be left in darkness. So we see refer to Matthew 24, 29. So let's read these uh, quotes, these passages. And Matthew 24, 29. Uh, it says, immediately, immediately after the tribulation of those days, Shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. She also referenced Mark 13, 24 and 25. 
It says, but in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And finally, she refers to Revelation 6.12. We will focus uh, uh, especially on this, this verse. It reads, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as the fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. We see the moon turn on red there. That's blood. And all right, she comments uh, on these signs or these tokens. She, she, she says, prophecy not only foretells us the manner and object of Christ's coming, but presents tokens by which men are to know when it is near, said Jesus. There shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, the 21. The sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give a light. And the stars of heaven shall fall. And the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. The Revelator thus describes the first of the signs to precede the second advent. There was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as a cloud of hair, and the moon became as blood. Revelation 6 12. These signs were witnessed before the opening of the 19th century. <coughs> so we know already that these tokens or these signs have already uh, happened. They occurred in the 19th century. We are very familiar. With these signs, right? We know that uh, these signs, uh, like it says in Revelation 6 12, started with the earthquake. Uh, earthquake, the great earthquake, it's uh, called of November 1st, 1755. Uh, the center was uh, near Portugal. We um, will read what Ellen White is saying about this. In fulfillment of this prophecy, there occurred in the year 755 the most terrible earthquake that has ever been recorded, though commonly known as the earthquake of Lisbon. It extended to the greater part of Europe, Africa, and America. It was felt in Greenland, in the West Indies, in the island of Madeira, in Norway and Sweden, Great Britain and Ireland. It pervaded an extent of not less than 4 million square miles. In Africa, the shock was almost as severe as in Europe. A great part of Algiers was destroyed and a short distance from Morocco. A village containing 8 or 10,000 inhabitants was swallowed up. A fast wave swept over the coast of Spain and Africa, engulfing cities and causing great destruction. It was in Spain and Portugal that the shock manifested its extreme violence. At Cadiz, the inflowing wave was said to be 60 feet high. Mountains, some of the largest in Portugal, were impetuously shaken, as it were, from the very, very foundations. And some of them opened at the summits, which were split and went in a wonderful manner. Huge masses of them being thrown down into the subjacent valleys. Flames are related to have issued from these mountains. Sir Charles Lyle in Principles of Geology, page 495. At Lisbon, the sound of thunder was heard on the ground, and immediately afterward, a violent shock threw down the greater part of that city. In the course of about six minutes, 60,000 persons perished. So I highlighted the numbers that she's mentioning here. It's Interesting that uh, you see three times 
she mentioned the number six or sixty. So it was interesting. Six, six, six. Okay. We'll go on. The second sign, of course, was um, after the earthquake was the uh, the dark day. Mark, right, you know that it took place uh, May 19, 1780. Uh, and Wright is also commenting on that. She says, 25 years later appeared the next sign mentioned in the prophecy, the darkening of the sun and moon. What rendered this more striking was the fact that the time of its fulfillment had been definitely pointed out in the Savior's conversation with his disciples of Oliver, after describing the long period of trial for the church, 12, 60 years of papal persecution concerning which he had promised that the tribulation should be shortened. He does mention certain events to precede this coming and fix the time when the first of these should be witnessed. In those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. The 1260 days or years terminated in 1798. A quarter of a century earlier, persecution had almost wholly ceased. Following this persecution, according to the words of Christ, the sun was to be darkened. On the 19th of May, 1780, this prophecy was fulfilled. So, and all right. Uh, makes clear that the signs were to be given after the 1260 years of paper persecution. And these signs uh, have been fulfilled. We first saw the earthquake, and then came the dark day, and then we had, we had another event, uh, right? which was the falling of the stars, the final sign or token that God would show. As a uh, yeah, warning that he would soon come. Uh, about the following of the stars, and it says in 1833, Miller received a license to preach from the Baptist Church, of which he was a member. A large number of the ministers of his denomination also approved his work, and it was with their formal sanction that he continued his labors. In 1833, same year, two years after Miller began to present in public, the evidences of Christ's soon coming, the last of his signs appeared, which were promised by the Savior as tokens of his second advent. Said Jesus, the stars shall fall from heaven, Matthew 24. And John, in the Revelation, declared, as he beheld in vision the scenes that were wrought the day of birth. The stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as the fig tree cast it were untimely fixed when she is shaken of the mighty wind. Revelation 6. This prophecy received a striking and impressive fulfillment in the great meteor shower of November 13, 1833. So now we have uh, discussed this, this uh, science, the, the earthquake, the the dark day where the moon also on the same day was uh, turned red as blood, right? So the, the darkening uh, and the moon becoming red, red as blood became, uh, happened on the same day. And the falling of the stars as the final sign. So like I said, I, I read a quote where just the right seems to connect these signs to the minute prior, we will read this, uh, this quote. <coughs> and she starts off uh, with uh, referring to Matthew 25, the uh, parable of the 10 virgins. She says, the, the coming of the bright moon was at midnight, the darkest hour. So the coming of Christ will take place in the dark spirit of this church history. The days of Noah and Lot picture the condition of the world just before the coming of the Son of Man. The scriptures pointing forward to this time declare that Satan will work with all power and with all the sufferings of unrighteousness. The Thessalonians chapter 2. 
is working as plainly revealed by the rapidly increasing darkness, the multitudinous errors, heresies, and delusions of the last days. She continues in the same uh, way. She says, not, not only is Satan leading the world captive, but his deceptions are leavening the professed churches of our Lord Jesus Christ. The great apostasy will develop into darkness deep as midnight. So we see here uh, midnight, of course, uh, symbol for midnight. Impenetrable as sector of air. To God's people, it will be a night of trial, a night of weeping, a night of persecution for the truth's sake. But out of that night of darkness, God's light will shine. So, Ellen White is we are referring to the Midnight Cry parable of the Ten Virgins of Matthew 25, and she connects this to Revelation 6 12 by mentioning the sackcloth of hair, right? uh, which occurs only in one place in the Bible, which is Revelation 6 12. Uh, which is mentioning the signs of the earthquake, the sun, moon, and stars. So, should we then, as priests, uh, now perhaps be, now be looking for signs in the sun, moon, and stars that might be of significance for us who are now living in the midnight cry period? Especially also since the midnight cry is symbolical of the second coming of Christ for the priest, right? We, uh, we know that, we said uh, November 9 would be close of probation for the priest, then July 18 would have to be the second coming for the priest. So we were presenting that uh, before July 18. So the signs of Revelation 6 have already been fulfilled, right? The earthquake, the sun movement. One of the stars. And since you are now dealing with a symbolic second coming of Christ for the priests, shouldn't we then be looking also for symbolic or spiritual signs in the events mentioned in Revelation 6 12? <clears throat> for we know, according to the Bible, that after the natural follows the spiritual, right? First Corinthians uh, 50 36, we know this. First, it says, how be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. So first the literal, then the, 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 yeah, the spiritual. Uh, we want to know if there's possibly a symbolic or a spiritual connection between the signs from Revelation 6 12 and the midnight cry. That's what we want to uh, find out. That's what is this, this presentation is all about. So let's uh, try and do that. So we first, of course, come to our line. <coughs> In the first layer mark, of course, it has to be the first token, the earthquake, uh, November 1, 755. Then, as uh, second, second day mark, we have uh, the dark day, 1780. Then we have the falling of the stars, 1833. We want to know if there's a connection between these day marks and July 18 symbol for the minute cry. So, the last fourth day mark, of course, would be uh, July 18. And then, of course, we're going to see. Uh, Going to measure the periods, right? Uh, and see what, yeah, if there, are, if you see anything interesting uh, show up. <coughs> so if we go and measure the number of days between the first sign, the earthquake, and July 18. It happens to be 96,684 days. Uh, if you convert it to the number of years, months, and days, it happens to be 
264 years, eight months, and 17 days. So, and straight away, we can see, we can recognize here the 264, right? Which is the symbol for, for July 18, because we all know that July 18, 2020, on the biblical calendar, was the 26th day of the fourth month, correct? So this is hopeful. And also, if you look at the months and days, eight months and 17 days, if you mirror it, so we take the eight, one, seven, and if you mirror it, you get seven, one, eight. So, and seven, one, eight is also uh, July 18, of course, right? So, I put it down there and I thought, okay, let's see what the other periods will show. But it starts off pretty well, I, I can say. Uh, so I, I measured the, the second period between uh, the dark day and July 18. And this was exactly 87,718 days. So here also we recognize uh, I, I, I guess you can see it already, the symbol of July 18, right? You see, let's see if you can. Uh, get a mouse pointer here. There you see the symbol of July 18 right here, but it's preceded by the number 87, which is almost July 18, but not quite right. We are missing the number one, but we cannot add, of course, the number one, uh, like just like that, it would be quite a stretch, too much of a stretch, right? So, um, but we'll, we'll park the number 87 uh, right there for now, but at least we have one hit, so to say, which is referring to July 18. So now we have, two periods that both connect, seem to connect to the right thing. And we have this uh, 87 as some kind of a loose end. But we, we will see that this number 87 will also become uh, significant, very significant later on with this uh, screen. So we're left with one more period between 1833 and uh, July 18. And this was, if you count the number of years between 2020 and 2033, lo and behold, it's 187 years. So isn't that uh, interesting to say the least, All right? So by now we should already um, and know that this uh, yeah it's not really a coincidence that there is more to this that we should uh, try and uh, discover so that's what we did um, so i put a uh, number of days there to be exact six, 60 86,184 days so i'll put the number one eight seven there so now we have three periods every period has some kind of reference to july 18. Uh, agreed do you, do you follow me so far agreed Amen. so what just as what we did with the uh, covid structure we added, added this period and to look what we, what, we, uh, what we get. But yeah, for now yeah. we cannot escape. For, for now we cannot escape the impression that the science for Revelation 612 have some sort of connection with July 18. And if we add all these periods on our line, 
similar to what we did with the proof structure we see the following we're just gonna we're just gonna add these periods and the total is 252,586 which I thought is an interesting number. And I bet you can see a uh, why. Uh, we recognize two very important prophetic numbers, right? You can see, first of all, the 252, which is the symbol of the 2520. And then we see 586. Anyone know what 586 reminds us of? Feel free to uh destruction of Jerusalem. Amen. Exactly the destruction of Jerusalem in 586 BC, from which we derived July 18 in the first place, because um, in our July 18 study we saw that the 10th day of the fifth month of 586. According to the rabbinical Julian calendar, was uh, also July 18, the day when the temple was uh, destroyed. So, the temple was destroyed on the 10th of the fifth month, which was July 18 on the rabbinical Julian calendar in 586 BC. And yeah, this way mark has important significance for us today. That's why I think. I mean, first of all, this can be no coincidence. Uh, this total here is uh, trying to tell us something. It's referring to the destruction of the temple. And I believe that it has significance for us now in the that dry period. Uh, so what does it mean? What does the temple destruction signify? What does it mean for us now today in the dry period? Uh, first of all, the Israelites, they took great pride in the temple as their strength and glory. You can read this in Ezekiel 24, where God is saying to Ezekiel that he will destroy the temple. Uh, and he uh, says it in these passages. Verse 16, 21, and 25, in this way. Verse 16 uh, it reads, Behold, I take away from thee the desire of thy eyes. And verse 21 says, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary, the excellency of your strength, the desire of your eyes. Talking about the temple. When I take from them their strength, verse 25, the joy of their glory. The desire of their eyes. Uh, and the word that Ezekiel is using in verse 21, and it says excellency, uh, it means, it also means uh, exaltation, majesty, pride, um, etc. Uh, Ezekiel also uses the word strength. Verse 21, it means uh, might, strength, material, physical, personal, social, political. Especially the political kind of strength is interesting in this context. So we look at that. And he uses another word for strength in verse 25, which um, yeah, means place or means of safety, protection. Refuge, stronghold, uh, human protection, uh, strong definition, according to strong definition, fortified place, figuratively defense, walk, strength, etc. Uh, so remember this. Um, but yeah, to make an application. Applying this um, to 
our 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 time. We know that today's glorious land is the USA, correct? And what is its pride and strength? That's my question. The Constitution. Amen. The Constitution. So we're going to look at this uh, more closely, the Constitution. And I write, is writing something about, about it. She says, and we have two horns like a lamb, and like horns, with youth, innocence, and gentleness, fitly representing the character of the United States when presented to the public as coming up in 1798. Among the Christian exiles who first fled to America and sought an asylum for royal oppression and priestly intolerance, there are many who determined to establish a government upon the broad foundation of civil and religious liberty. The views found place in the Declaration of Independence, which, set, which sets forth the great truth that all men are created equal and endowed with the inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the Constitution guarantees to the people the right of self-government, providing that representatives elected by the popular vote shall enact and administer the laws. Freedom of religious faith was also granted, every man being permitted to worship God according to the dictates of his conscience. Republicanism and Protestantism became the fundamental principles of the nation. These principles are the secret of this power and prosperity. The oppressed and downtrodden throughout Christendom have turned to this land with interest and hope. Millions have sought its shores, and the United States has risen to the place among the most powerful nations of the earth. So she refers to the Constitution, and she says, Republicanism and Protestantism are the secret of, of this power and, the, and, and prosperity. And of course, the Constitution is there to protect these, uh, these principles. Um, and to see what uh, some writers are, are saying about this Constitution, this was written by someone uh, at the 20, at the 200th anniversary of the Constitution of the United States. It was a long article, but I just read the highlighted part. And Carmel Handini writes, the Americans have reason to be proud of their Constitution. And I put it here because we just read in Ezekiel that uh, the, the Jews were proud of their temple. And we here read that the Americans likewise are proud of the, their constitution. It's not article says the U.S. Constitution, drafted on May 25, 1787, has been the symbol of American pride, freedom, and hopes, dreams, etc. So again, uh, making clear that uh, yeah, they are proud of the Constitution. Uh, another article says the Constitution is the stronghold of our country, which we also read. Also, word that Ezekiel used to describe the temple. Um, yet another article. This is uh, written uh, when, 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 or because of the the. the uh, the movement, of, how do you say, the Constitution and Declaration of Independence, they were moved to another location. 
it was first taught in Fort Knox. Uh, later on, there was the, the National Archives Library in Washington, where these documents are now be being stored. So this was about the uh, relocating these documents. And President Herbert Hoover, he, he said personally, yeah, he said himself, um, there will be aggregated, aggregated here, talking about the library, the National Archive Museum, I should say. There will be aggregated here the most sacred documents of our history, the originals of the Declaration of Independence and of the Constitution of the United States. And these documents were moved to the National Archive uh, Museum with a lot of uh, uh, pomp, what do you call it? A lot of ceremony with, with yeah, guarded with, with two tanks and, and uh, soldiers with machine guns uh, to transfer this to the National Archive. And but it's interesting that Hoover is saying, referring to these documents, the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, as the most sacred documents. So that's connection there, uh, I believe, with the uh, with temple, right? Uh, sacred, in other words, for yeah, holy. Interesting that he uses the word sacred. And I read the highlighted here. This is uh, not a little bit too far, but President Harold Truman who's saying this. He says, we are engaged here today in a symbolic act. We are, we are enshrining these documents for future, future ages. And then he says, and our generation can take just right in it. And enshrining, another word, which means, uh, yeah, to contain or keep something as if in a holy place. So I see there a connection also with the temple, right, in uh, Jerusalem. So I thought that was interesting to uh, to see. So we're trying to make, uh, I try to connect the temple in Jerusalem, uh, how this, Symbolically refers to the constitution. Uh, I think that's yeah, pretty clear for everyone that uh, you, can see the, you can see this connection. Is this the National Archive uh, you see? And it, yeah, it, looks, it looks like a temple, right? Um, I think it does. And those are the, the sacred documents. They are framed, they are within a gold frame, so to say. And it reminds me of the, the most holy place of the temple, where we also see uh, something similar, a golden ark. And the golden ark was, uh, was uh, there were two angels guarding the the ark. Here we see also two cards guarding the, the sacred documents, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence. So that that, that was interesting uh, comparison between the Temple of Jerusalem and the Constitution, uh, also being uh, yeah, enshrined. So yeah. We are definitely proud of the Constitution. We see Constitution t shirts, uh, Constitution socks and plates, and even underwear and caps, whiskey glasses, Constitution towels, shoes, scarves, bedding, curtains, clocks, uh, you name it, tablecloths. So we got the point right. Um, Constitution is the pride of the United States. So, 
if you read the signs correctly, you're looking uh, at the number 252586, referring to the destruction of the temple. If this is a sign, then it seems to point to the downfall of the constitution of the USA during the midnight cry period. So we are still looking at this number uh, at which we arrived by adding the different periods. Right? We added those three periods and came to this number. Uh, yeah, we did the same, exactly the same with the COVID structure. We then came to the number 1629, if you, if you remember that, yeah. uh, based upon Revelation 915. By adding the periods of the different pay marks, this is from uh, a screenshot from uh, the COVID study where we added these uh, four periods and came to the number 629. Um, and we did, we then added 391 to 629, which produced uh, another significant prophetic number. And we saw eventually, we saw a lot of. Prophetic numbers, all the way marks on the line, the big line. Uh, we then, if we also add 391 to this number, 252586, we again recognize the prophetic number, which is uh, 252977. So if we do the same here, uh, we get 252977. And 977, of course, uh, is the year when Jeroboam set up the two golden calves and then and the battle. Um, and if you look at First Kings 12, verse 32, 33, we there read that Jeroboam ordained a feast on the eighth month and 15th day, which we know since August 15, which is a symbol of the Internet Pride. And the king was there doing a priest, priestly work. And the golden caps, of course, represent the image of the beast. But this is nothing new so far. But if you read this sign correctly, it seems to tell us that we'll see that church and state come together also during the Midnight Pride. Um, and according to the rabbinical Gregorian calendar, Jeroboam did this on October 13, which is a significant date because it is the date when the midnight cry for the priest was given in 2018. Uh, if you if you can remember that. So we have October 13 here and it's referring to uh, Jeroboam who was offering on the 8 day 15, 8 month 15 day symbol of the midnight cry, but also October 13 is the symbol of the midnight cry because uh, on that Day 2018, the Midnight Prayer for the Priest was given. And this brings us to the number 87, which was kind of a loose end, right, in our structure. Uh, we were uh, working this for, uh, for, you know, for a second. But now, if you look at 87 and more closely, uh, if you add 87 days to July 18, we also arrive at October 13, which I thought was uh, interesting, and thus referring to the Vietnam cry. So basically, all the numbers that we see in our structure have some kind of connection with we did not cry. Um, 
I hope we can see it. And there is more to say about this number 87. So let's look at that. So apart from this number 87 connecting the two symbols, 18 and 18 to one another, uh, there seems to be more significance to this number. And if you're looking back to the July 18 structure and the five to five days between July 18, 2020 and December 25, 2021, we saw a great significance in the Bible verses, right? Genesis five to five and Daniel five to five. Right, we, we remember this uh, structure, the triple seven structure, and there were 525 days between July 18 and December 25. And then we looked up uh, the Bible verses, Daniel 5 to 5, and Genesis 5 to 5. In Daniel 5 to 5, we came across the the first that was referring to the 2520 or 126, right? Many, many degrees in. We saw that in 525, this was uh, relevant, right? It was, was significant. And also Genesis 525, we saw he had the name Lamech, uh, who was born when his father, Methuselah, was 187 years old. So we saw that the symbol of 187. And Lamech himself died at age 777. So we saw a lot of significance there. And we're going to do the exact same thing with the number 87. We're going to look, go to, we're going to go to Bible first. And we can go to Daniel 87. And there we are confronted with a passage that very much connects with the outline of this study. And I'm going to ask someone to read this uh, quote, to read this passage. Can somebody read this? And I saw him come close onto the ram, and he was moved with collar against him, and smote the ram and break his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him. But he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Thank you. So what, what is this talking about? What is this first specifically talking about? Uh, we know it refers to Middle Persia, right? Uh, in, in the historical sense. But we know we are also apply this to our line, and how do we apply it uh, for us in, 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 in our line? Anybody knows? So, what is Middle Persia uh, representing for us now today? The U.S. Amen. Exactly. The United States. Uh, two horned uh, beast, right? So, with be the Persia typifying the U.S.A. and the two horns representing the republicanism, and Protestantism, this passage can be seen as describing the downfall of the Constitution and eventually also the United States being followed up by the United Nations, which was the the the, the Greece or the, uh, Greece represents of course the United Nations. So this is uh, a common knowledge also. But uh, we we are talking about downfall of the Constitution and downfall of the United States. But interesting that this first is referring to the downfall of the United States in that sense. So it connects with the scope of this, this, this study. Uh, also, 
with regard to Border Collins uh, application of the 3520 mirror structure concerning the Trump prophecy. The number 87 also comes into play in, in an interesting way. So this was um, what Border Collins was presenting. <coughs> And uh, I guess most of you have, have seen this node structure. But in this application, Donald Trump represents the king of the north. Right? And Joe Biden represents the king of the south. And we understand that the structure reflects uh, a mirror. I could call this the uh, 2520 mirror structure, or the, the extended 2520. But uh, looking at the presidency, presidency so you first see the King of the South defeating the King of the North, which is already which already took place. This is the past tense. We saw Joe Biden. Uh, become president. And then at the end of this structure, we will see the opposite. We will see the king of the north defeating the king of the south. And that's how we understand this uh, structure. So we expect that Trump will come back to power again. And we also believe that he will usher in the Sunday law in the USA. And we are marking these events at the end of the 25 year structure. So I'm going to put the Sunday law there at the end, uh, lining up with 1863 for uh, this purpose. So The mirror structure starts with Isaiah 7, 8. I see this uh, over there. It begins with it. it starts with Isaiah 7, 8. And if you go to his mir mirror first, it would be Isaiah 8, 7, right? So, what do we read in Isaiah 8-7? We dare encounter a passage that very much connects with the events that we expect to take place at the end of the 25-20 mirror structure. We said Trump would become president. Uh, he typifies King of the North, and we will see uh, Sunday law. So going to Isaiah 8, 7, we read the following. And can any, anyone read this verse? Now therefore behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria and all his glory, and he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, who's the king of Assyria? Another term that we use. King of the north. King of the north. Exactly. So, the king of Assyria, of course, is the king of the north. In this application representing uh, Donald Trump. And we further understand that the analogy of the King of the North with a river overflowing the banks applies also to the coming Sunday law, right? We, we know that also, it's also common knowledge. Uh, I mean, in the next verse, Isaiah 8 8, it's a uh, Repeating and enlarging upon this, uh, this overflowing, it says, Isaiah 8, 
he shall pass through Judah and shall overflow and go over. And these are the exact same Hebrew words that are also mentioned in Isaiah 28, 15, and Isaiah 28, verse 18, and Daniel 11, verse 40, which are all referring to the same thing, which is the Sunday law, uh, which is also common knowledge. So, yeah, so Isaiah 8, 7 is, is, is talking about exactly uh, what we are talking about, uh, King of the North coming to power and are coming up and implementing uh, a Sunday law. So this, this fits very well, I should say, with connects uh, very well with, with what we are expecting Trump coming to power. It's, the King of the Lord and implementing a Sunday law. So I thought that was very interesting to see. Uh, word uh, dissenting. Uh, so it seems in this way, the number 87 in this way seems to add weight to the structure with Isaiah 7 8 at the start. And this mirror first as I it's seven at the end of the 2520 structure. But that, that was I thought that was quite interesting to, uh, to show. So going back to our, our, our structure and experience that we just uh, looked at and we added those uh, three periods. There's more, more in the structure that we can do, and we can just look at the the signs themselves and see if there is some significance, some, some significance there when we measure the periods, and if we do that, we know that. Between the first sign, the earthquake, 755, and the last sign, the following of the stars from 82 to 3, there are 78 years and 12 days. And again, if we mirror this, I mean, we're talking about 20 mirror structures. We are not, not familiar with uh, mirroring and numbers. If you mirror this, we see, of course, 2.187. So we see there also a symbol of writing. And this time the two symbolizing the year 2020 in front of this number instead of at the end. But I don't think that's a problem. Uh, so now we have four periods in our structure, just like with the COVID structure, we also have four periods there um, so now we can again total the number of days and see what we get this time with the four periods so we had uh, this number of days from the earthquake to July 18 then we had uh, this number of days 87,718 from the third day to July 18 and then from the following of the stars to July 18, we had 86,184 days. And now we have, so this was subtotaling. We looked already at this uh, number, 252586. This is then uh, a subtotal. We can now add the 87 years and 12 days. Then we come to a grand total of 281,087 days. And if we zoom in on that number, I uh, bet you can already see it. Right? But what can we do with zeros? We can, we can drop them, right? So let's drop the zero, shift the one over. Then we again see come across uh, the symbol of 
July 18, but not quite. But now also we have some kind of a loose end here. We see the 28 year, so what's that? Uh, is it significant? Uh, so far we saw uh, symbol of the midnight price showing up in every number so far. So we expect to see the same, especially with this grand total, uh, with the number 28. So let's uh, look at that. Uh, so we arrived at this grand total of 281.087 days by adding the four periods within a structure. And again, similar to what we did with the 1629 of the COVID structure, and also with the, the number of the subtotal, right? 252586. A few slides ago, we will now uh, combine our grand total of 281.087 with 391. Of preference and fifteen, and see what we what we get. Uh, but this time we won't add the uh, divide this uh, grand total by the number three ninety one. And doing this, we get two eight one zero eight seven divided by three ninety one is seven eighteen, and then a bunch of decimals, which I don't know. That's very simple. Before the decimal point, we see again the symbol of July 18. Uh, so it was also worth mentioning. But uh, yeah, like I said, it's so far, so far we were able to pretty much connect every number, every period to the minute Y when we were looking uh, at the number. 87.718, we discovered that apart from the 718 being a symbol of the 18, that the number 87 was significant as well. Like we looked at Isaiah 87 and Daniel 87. We thought it was a loose end, but it appeared to be very significant potentially. Uh, so looking at this grand, grand total, 281087. Uh, days, it's the grand total of all periods. We would expect to see the same thing here, right? Uh, so in this number, we already recognized the 187. Within this, this number, a symbol of variety, but then there's this uh, number 28 preceding it. So does the number 28, just like the number 87, also have any significance. Uh, and we saw just a few slides ago, we saw that 87 days when we added it to July 18, we came to October 13, which of course is the same of the middle Y. And if we do the same with the number 28 and add 28 days to July 18, we arrive at the date August 15. So, isn't that uh, interesting? So again, amazingly, we observe the symbol of the Vedic Pride over and over again. But uh, also when we were dealing with number 87, we found some connecting Bible verses. Right, we saw again, Daniel 87 uh, connecting we saw Isaiah is second connecting to our narrative. And knowing that the rope is consistent, certainly the same should be the case with this number 28. And there is indeed one first in particular that potentially might be of significance. And it is numbers to first eight. So now things get very interesting. Um, to say, say the least, but uh, so let, let's look at, at the numbers two, first eight, which we derived from this grand total. If we go there, uh, 
I'll read it. It says, and his host and those that were numbered there of were 50 and 7,400. So this verse is dealing with the number of warriors in the tribe of Sebulon and where they should position themselves around the tabernacle. But before we look at the number, we'll first examine the name Sebulon. It means uh, exalted habitation or exalted house. Uh, also, when Sebulon was born, uh, Leah, the wife of Jacob, she said, now will my husband dwell with me? You can read this in Genesis 30, verse 20. And this um, John F. Asar, he wrote this in his book, uh, Isaiah Through the Centuries, concerning the meaning of the name uh, Sebulon. He says, the striking description of heaven as a holy and glorious habitation occurs several times in the scrolls. He's referring to the scrolls there. Uh, he says, the meaning of the word is explained by reference to the story of how Sebulon got his name. Leah said, my husband will dwell with me. And Sabu, the dwelling. Uh, modern scholars on the basis of Ugaritic and Akkadian cognates believe that the verb means to exalt, honor, and the noun, an exalted house. So the verb means exalted honor and the noun uh, it means an exalted house. So, applying this again to, like we did with uh, number 87, applying this to the end of the 2020 mirror structure, which ends in, in the year 1863, which is paralleling the Sunday law, right? There are some interesting observations. Uh, so Sebulon, it means exalted house, uh, and yeah, it, it can it could refer to a church, right? Which is uh, which you call an exalted house. But and Leah, she she's saying when when, when Sebulon was born, she says, "Now will my husband dwell with me?" But was, was, was anything born in 1863 that we remember? Organization. Sorry? Organization. Organization, yeah, of, of the Adventist Church, correct. Uh, so an exalted house can typify a church. And we saw the birth of an exalted house in 1863, namely the Seventh day Adventist Church, which was now officially and formally organized. Uh, so also, looking at Leah, Leah is a woman which represents the church. Her husband then would typify Christ as the bridegroom and head of the church. Uh, and quote Ella right, she, she writes, the tabernacle of God is with man and he dwells with me. Leah said, now my husband, now will my husband dwell with me? So, and we see a connection there with, 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 with uh, the name Sebulon and what Leah is uh, saying. So, and also, since we paralleled 863 with Sunday law, uh, applying this to the Sunday law, we know that 144,000 will then be organized. Not, not in a literal sense, not in the sense that we will have the general conference or whatever, but more that we are ready to give the last warning message. Uh, 144,000 will be listed up and exalted, which was 
also the meaning of the name Sibirum, exalted, right? Uh, the 144,000 will be lifted up and exalted for the entire world to see during this period. So we see some interesting connection there with, uh, in, in the first numbers two, uh, eight, verse eight. So now looking at the number now, 50 and 7,400, uh, so the, the number you mentioned is 57,400, which may not seem significant at first. But if we count back this number of days from July 18, 2020, we arrive at a very interesting date, counting back 574 days from July 18, 2020, it brings us to 1863. That isn't that. Uh, amazing. Uh, we're talking about the, the, the end of the 2520 mirror structure, and now we see 863 showing up if we turn back the days you know, mentioned in numbers to eight. But moreover, to be uh, more specific, if we first back to May 23, 1863. And if you look up this day on the internet, we find the following amazing uh, information. So this is just a secular site. What does it say happened on May 23, 1863? Can anyone read this for me? What happened on May the 23rd, 1863? Organization of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Battle Creek, Michigan. So, can anyone was say? That May 23rd, sorry. Was that May 23rd or May, May 21st? Because I noticed a 521 on Collins line last week. And then when I looked up, what date was the SBA, you know, when, when was it organized? I got 521, 1863. But I, I don't know, like I'd have to look at the PSDA and think writing themselves, I suppose. Okay, so, uh, but yeah, isn't this uh, amazing? Can you say amen to this or what? Yes, it is. Amen. 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 I mean, you, you can make this up, right? I mean, if you were not convinced already, uh, this should seal the deal, right? I mean, I don't know about you, but this is uh, very, very miraculous. And uh, I uh, was very impressed to, 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 uh, when we, we discovered this. So, not only uh, does this date point us back to 1863, the very year that marks the end of the 2020 marriage structure, adding weight to our application, but it also points to the exact day the SDA church was established on May 23. I mean, come on, people. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is just awesome. I mean, uh, this is uh, unbelievable. Based upon uh, on, on the Bible itself, uh, Numbers 2, verse 8, if you count back, those numbers, those numbers of days we, got, we get to uh, the very day that the SDA church was established. Uh, So, marking the Sunday law at the end of the Petra Centennial structure, the connection with May 2263, at least suggests that once we arrive at this day mark, God will have a church that is established, prepared, and ready to give the last warning message to the world. 
um, uh, going back to Revelation uh, 6, verse 12, we could actually actually line this up with the uh, July 18th structure. So on the top line, we see the, the earthquake, the dark day, and the of the stars. And then below, we see the, mid the midnight, uh, the, or the July 18th, way marks, midnight, midnight, right, and so the last. Um, so July 18th, is, is in a sense uh, much more than just uh, a bunch of dates. The, the, the writing structure is some kind of a, a blueprint, I should say, of what is going to take place. Uh, so if we draw it like this, the, the earthquake then represents uh, a shaking. Uh, which is what we saw happening, right, November 9, 2019, with the Omega movement, and even July 18, itself was a major shaking. We saw that with what happened with FFA. The dark day would then represent uh, midnight cry, or first darkest hour, where we will see uh, and disasters and calamities dramatic, dramatic, dramatically increase, which will lead up eventually to the Sunday law and the moon red as blood and sackcloth being symbols for the loss of life and mourning. Um, we could read that uh, in Revelation 6, verse 12. Uh, and then we have the falling of the stars, which took place uh, in the same year that Miller received his license to preach in 1833. We know that stars represent angels, angels typify messengers or messages, indicating we will have license like Miller, that is license. This time we have license from God to preach the last warning message to the world during the last five period during the Sunday law. So in closing, uh, we, have, we, we can see that all these connections are unmistakably showing that we are being led by God. Uh, the signs in the earthquake, the sun, the moon, and the stars are there. It, it's uh, we cannot deny it, the signs are there. And they are there for us priests to recognize and for us to know what is about to happen. And these signs are there for us to know that it is all very near. We are on the verge of, as and I write phrases, of a stupendous crisis in which you will see a Dramatic worldwide increase of calamities, famine, war, natural disasters, pestilence, etc. Uh, therefore, the signs are shown us so that all who will may flee from the red to come. We started this presentation with this uh, passage. Uh, also, judging from the signs, you may expect them to see Trump returning to power. Uh, during whose reign we will witness a further decline of the constitution. As a result of the crisis, church and state will come closer and closer together, and eventually Donald Trump will then assume the U.S. case someday now. Uh, yeah, all, all in all, it will be a very dark period for the U.S.A. and for the rest of the world. But as we could read uh, in the beginning of this uh, presentation, uh, they that heed the warning shall not be left in darkness. So that concludes uh, this presentation.
thank you all for this uh, opportunity. Shall we close with a prayer? Amen. Thank you. Yes. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this uh, yeah, study that uh, things that have been spoken, that we have things that, that we've been reading, that it may make an impression upon all our hearts and help us to understand and realize that uh, you are still guiding us every step on the way. Help us. Uh, to do what we have to do, Lord. We thank you for all the light that you have been giving us, not just to myself, but to others also, Lord. Help us to yeah, unite all these truths that you have been showing us. Help us to put it all together and to, to and synchronize these two so that we uh, maybe one that we may be uh, unified uh, in these two. It, it is only you that can uh, establish this. Please help us to uh, do your will. Uh, keep blessing us with the letter rain. Uh, help us to give us the strength or to, and the power, the courage the will to do what we have to do. The crisis is uh, upon us and we have to, our will at least, uh, have to take the necessary steps or to, to, if possible, to evade all the, the role that is upon us. Uh, help us there to, yeah, do the right thing, be with us and step on the way. We ask uh, for your blessings. Uh, this continuing Sabbath. Thank you, Lord. We ask for these things in Jesus' name. Amen.